So, Hi, I'm Travis. I play guitar and sing for the band Culprit. How did the name Culprit originate, and what's the significance to you? Um, well, we we were uh, you know bouncing band names you know back and forth. We had a few like tentative um, tentative ones that you know, we wanted to do. And uh, to be completely honest, I was just hanging, listening to Underoath, and then nice. I am the culprit line, you know, like that whole thing. And I, uh, I, I researched it, I liked the name, and uh, I felt that it kind of got our like message, message across to, you know, so yeah. Sweet. I love that it came from Underoath. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, what progressions or changes have you noticed either in yourself or the music over the years? Man, well, I've been, I'm, I'm the founder of the band. I started the band in, in 2006, um, so I've had a lot of time yeah. to actually uh, grow. But, um, I, I found, I found that I, I, you know, back when I started the band or like right before that, I was like really into like super heavy and brutal music, and if it wasn't heavy, like then I didn't like it. Yeah. Like, so I feel like I was able to kind of refine my ear a little bit, and um, and uh, I feel that it's helped me as a musician like become uh, you know better in my writing. Yeah, grow um, more. Yeah, listening because now I just listen to bands like Thrice and Circa, and, nice. you know, like just the receiving of sirens, you know, something like that. It's just yeah. love that. I was listening to Circa the other day. I was like, I haven't listened to this in forever. So good. <laughs> Um, what is the most important aspects um, that you think any band should keep kind of as DIY um, as far as they progress and bring more people in? Um, well, the roughest part of the, the industry or, you know, being a, a do-it-yourself band for me has always been like the business aspect of it and social media is becoming such a huge like thing, yeah. um, you know, in our world. Um, so, if I was going to say anything, like, become a social media like, hound, <laughs> and uh, that'll really help you out. It's my yeah. least favorite part of the job. I like, I like writing and, and uh, doing the That's why you have people like me. <laughs> sure. stuff. Yeah, I like having a manager, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you kind of started to answer my next question, but do you ever find it difficult to balance the artistry and business uh, side of everything? All the time. Um, we, uh, the past year we've, we've picked up management. So, and that's, um, uh, Impulse Artist is our manager, you know, management for whatever, but, um, yeah, they, you know, Nate and, and Jack and, and Aaron, they really, uh, just take that weight off me. Because I feel like I can't focus, like, sometimes on, on writing music, because, like, you know, You're like, worried have, with everything else. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, we're, um, now they're kind of working on all the business stuff, and they can just, like, let me know, like, hey, you know, so-and-so wants to hear a new song, like, we need to be in the studio yeah. next month to get it done, like, get it done, or like, you know, so it's, it's a lot uh, more free. Freeing, yeah, you have the time just to focus on what you do. Yeah. So. Cool. Uh, what was the inspiration behind the music and the artwork for Analog? Um, we were going through probably the largest like transformation that Culprit has gone through, you know, you know, since we started. Yeah. Um, around, you know, around that time. Uh, so, what analog means is it's actually like a defining, it's like, you know, like prologue, mm -hmm. epilogue, and so an analog is actually a description or, um, a, you know, a, like a defining statement. Awesome. Um, and I feel like analog is the defining statement of um, that, uh, that this was our, you know, you know, this, here's what we, this is what you are, yeah, here it is. Take it or leave it, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Um, because of how many different, you know, kind of personas we've taken upon over the years. Yeah. And, um, now we just kind of have like that more cohesive unit. That's, uh, that's kind of what we hang our hat on, yeah. Nice. I enjoy it. Uh, how do you feel about playing a headlining show at Chain Reaction? Um, I remember, uh, you know, back back in the day, always wanting to, you know, uh, just play here. Yeah. Um, so it's been.
been a long time coming. I'm a lot, I'm a lot older now. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm excited. Um, it's definitely something that I've wanted to do. For a, yeah. Yeah, for a while. Uh, what's and then so kind of as growing up around here, what's one of the most memorable shows that you've attended? At Chater? Yeah. Um, shit. Um, it's probably gonna be a. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to name like three shows. Down. <laughs> one, one just means anything you want to go for. <laughs> Not you can only pick one and one only. Right. No. I saw um, the the drive through records showcase here. I believe in like 2004, nice. or like 2003 maybe. Um, it was like starting line, Arx Bandits, um, like Census Fail. It was like all the new like yeah. drive through bands or whatever. And RXB just like blew me away. They're so amazing. I am that and so the almost show. I, it was like their first show or whatever. So, yeah. yeah, it was here. It I was saw awesome. them once on tour with the used a couple oh, years boys ago. Out. That was an awesome yeah. show too. <laughs> Um, so what's kind of your perception of the Southern California music scene and do you think it's helped or hindered culprit in any way? Um, well, what's really funny is uh, we had the, the privilege of hanging with Aaron Lunsford from As Cities Burn recently um, and uh, he kind of asked us, he, he was like, so what's it like, you know, being in a band from LA? Yeah. Because every band he's been in has been from a small town, you know, in Louisiana or, you know, Texas or something like that. And you kind of know all the other bands. There's not really like, there's like four other bands in the town. And that's it, yeah. And then you get big in that town really fast because there's only four bands, you know, they, they pick a band they like really fast. And then you're always playing the same shows together, the same yeah, venues, exactly. yeah. Um, so, We've had it a little bit differently <laughs> over here with, you know, there's, there are thousands of bands and, and even Constantly. more artists, yeah. you know, and a and hundred venues. I, like, yeah, so much to choose from out <laughs> so, here. It's so different. Um, it's, um, I wouldn't, I don't want to say that it's hindered us because I feel like we've been able to, to kind of uh, make a name for ourselves. I mean, we are here headlining yeah. in reaction tonight. and. Um, Overcome the challenges. Yeah, exactly. Um, but it, it does make me wonder, like, what if we were one of those small town bands? Yeah, what how would it if, differ? What would your experience exactly. be then? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, what's one of the greatest challenges and accomplishments that you guys have faced as a band? Funding our own record. Um, for those you know, people who don't know, uh, music production and, and like packaging and everything, it is extremely expensive. I mean, we probably spent around ten thousand dollars on our um, on our uh, record. So, um, and the fact that we it's it's paid for it, and it's not even like on credit cards or anything. Like we've paid for it. All of it. So yeah, that's um, huge. That's uh, that's cool. And and. We've had a lot of help. We did a Kickstarter and yeah. that gave us five grand. Um, so that's so important. Grand. Yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, we wouldn't have been able to do it with, without you know our friends and family. It obviously yeah. still shows that you have the support, even though you have so many options out here. So. And upcoming plans for you guys? Um, we're playing The Wire in Upland on February fourth. We are playing a show at the Roxy on February 19th with our buddies in Quesara. Um We've got some fun plans for that show. Um, so, you know, if you find yourself around Sorry. the Sunset Strip <laughs> mid-February, check it out. Um, and we've got a tour that we're doing with uh, a, a band called TikTok Man um, with members from Gatsby's American Dream. Ooh, there. Nice. And uh, another uh, another band, um, I'm blanking on the name right now, but uh, we're, we're doing a you know, two-week tour in, in April. Nice. And so that'll be cool. We're doing Northwestern Run, so it'll be like the North. Oh, wow. <laughs> that awesome. All right. Any last words? Um. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> if I can leave you with anything, it's that um, without inspiration, we we are nothing. Uh, watch the cosmos, cosmic crossing, and I'll tell you all. About it. <laughs>